Hi, and welcome to our first lecture in Unit 1 of Multivariable Calculus. In this lecture, what we're going to do is give an overview of the space that we work in in this course. Throughout the semester, I'm going to compare and contrast ideas from multivariable calculus to familiar ideas from single variable calculus, and that includes some of the ideas that we're going to look at in this lecture. So let's begin by talking about the space we usually work in whenever we say we're doing single variable calculus. And that space is usually the xy plane. I'm going to introduce a new notation in for the xy plane, which you may have seen before. And it's a kind of bold faced R symbol with an exponent of two. That's read as R2. So that's two dimensional familiar XY space. The coordinates we typically write as X and Y. And when we study functions in single variable calculus, what we're usually looking at is functions of the form Y equals F of X. So here X is the independent variable. And Y is the dependent variable. The graph of such a function is a picture of the set of points in R2, which make the equation y equals f of x true. So typically, we think of functions as looking like this in single variable calculus. So the graph of y equals f of x is the set of points of the form x comma f of x, where x is belonging to the domain of f, which I'll just denote like this, so the domain of f. And of course, when we look at the xy plane, we have the familiar four quadrants. So the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. Okay, let's take some of these ideas and see how they go up to three-dimensional space, which is going to be the space that we work in very often when we're studying multivariable calculus. So here we have x, y, z space, which we'll denote by R3. So anytime I say R3, I'm talking about this x, y, z space. So when I look at these three axes here, I kind of imagine that I'm looking at a place in a room where I've got two walls and the floor. This axis I would label x, this one y, and this one z. We'll talk a little later about how you have to draw this space in this particular way. So sometimes students will look at this picture and think, oh, couldn't you just switch the X and Y axes? And you can't. We'll get to that later when we talk about something called the right hand rule. But for now, anytime you draw a picture of R3, make sure you draw it in a way that matches this. The coordinates, of course, are X comma Y comma Z. And functions may look like, say, z is a function of x and y, where x and y are independent variables and z depends on x and y. Notice here z is a function of multiple variables, hence multivariable calculus. This type of function essentially generalizes the function I wrote over on the left in single variable calculus. But I put a note here that this is actually just one type of function that we're going to study this semester. So there will be other kinds of functions that we're interested in in multivariable calculus, which won't necessarily have exactly this form. Now in this picture of R3 I've drawn over here on the right, we have to keep in mind that this is a three dimensional picture. So it's hard to draw it on a flat screen or a flat piece of paper. So in this picture, I didn't draw too much because I didn't wanna make the picture too full of extra details. So in particular, this axis here, this x-axis, it's really only the positive half of the x-axis. And you can imagine that it goes backwards like this to negative x values. Likewise, y, of course, would extend towards the left to negative y values. And z, being vertical here, would also go down and have negative z values. Then if you imagine all of the different zones, where say two of the variables are positive and one is negative or something like that, what you're going to do is have one, two, three, four zones up top for positive values of z and one, two, three, four zones down in the bottom for negative values of z. So since we have eight regions that we can divide the space up into, we say that this R3 divides up into eight octants. So instead of quadrants like in R2, here we're looking at octants in R3. I think of multivariable calculus as a very visual subject. So we're gonna draw a lot of pictures this semester. 
So as much as we illustrate ideas this semester, we know that sometimes we're drawing pictures that really belong in three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional object, like a flat piece of paper. And so in that context, we're just gonna do the best we can. Let's keep looking at these two spaces here, R2 on the left and R3 on the right. What I'd like to point out right now is that the set of points which satisfy an equation might be a different set of points depending on which space you're working in. So over here on the left, we have R2, and I've asked the question, what is the equation of the x-axis? So if I wanted to write down an equation whose graph would be equivalent to graphing the x-axis, what is the equation I would write down? And what you want to think of is, well, what's true about every single point along the x-axis? What does it mean to belong to the x-axis? It means that your y-coordinate is zero. So the equation of the x-axis in R2 is simply y equals zero. However, what happens if I take this equation y equals zero and I try to graph it in R3? So let's work out what set of points in R3 satisfies the equation y equals zero. Okay, well, here's the positive half of the y-axis. We can imagine the negative half of the y-axis extending out here to the left. So points which satisfy y equals zero wouldn't live over here to the right, nor would they live over here to the left. They'd have to be right here where y equals zero. However, we could have positive x values, we could have negative x values, we could have positive z values, we could have negative z values. In order to satisfy y equals zero, we just have to make sure that we don't travel along the y-axis. So in fact, the set of points in R3, which makes the equation y equals zero true, is no longer a line, it's actually a plane. So here I'm trying to draw a three-dimensional picture on a flat screen. It's a little hard to see. You can you could read that picture a couple different ways. So when in doubt, label your pictures. This is the xz plane. So that I'm telling whoever's looking at it, hey, this is the xz plane. It takes away some of the ambiguity that we get when we try to graph pictures in R3. So the xz plane is the set of points in R3 satisfying the equation y equals zero. Let's talk a little bit more about the xz plane. It's what we call a coordinate plane. So these are the planes where we can think of all the action happening with just two of the variables, and the third variable is zero. So here are the three planes. The yz plane is the plane for which x equals zero. So that's this vertical plane right here. Its equation is x equals zero. Similarly, the xy plane, which we have some familiarity with because we've worked in the xy plane as the entire space itself, that's down here, kind of flat. That's the plane whose equation is z equals zero. And then lastly, the plane we just saw was the xz plane, so that's kind of over here on the left. And that, of course, is the plane whose equation is y equals zero. Now, if you look at this picture, if you didn't see it before, you can really see how R3 divides up into eight regions. So we have one, two, three, four regions on the top. The one kind of closest to us, if you will, opening up towards us is the first octant, where all three variables are positive. And then we have one, two, three, four octants down on the bottom. So we have eight total regions in R3. Here's a look at a way to designate exactly where a point is in three-dimensional space. So consider the point 4, negative 3, 5. When you're graphing a point in R2 in the xy plane, it's not very difficult to make precise exactly where the point is. But when you're looking at three coordinates, it can be hard to communicate the sense of depth. So here, our x coordinate is 4. So to indicate that, come down to 4 on the x-axis. The y coordinate is negative 3, so I've traveled left to y equals negative 3, and then the z coordinate is 5. And then to make it clear to the viewer exactly where this point is situated in three-dimensional space, we've essentially drawn a rectangular cube here so that you realize that to get to this point, you come four units down the x-axis, three units to the left on the y-axis, and five units up on the z-axis.
Now, rarely will we actually be graphing lots of points with this much detail, but I wanted to show you one way to try to communicate on a flat picture a sense of depth in R3. Okay, now let's look at a few other concepts in both R2 and R3. So first, let's revisit the familiar distance formula between any two points in the xy plane. So throughout this unit, we'll see this notation as a way of denoting points in either R2 or R3. So the points are called P and Q. And then for point P, its x-coordinate is P1 and its y-coordinate is P2. And then for the point Q, its coordinates are Q1 and Q2. Then as you may recall, the distance from point P to point Q is the length of the line segment connecting these two points. And how we compute that is we take P1 minus Q1 and square that plus P2 minus Q2, that quantity squared, and then we take the square root of that quantity. Now, if you're wondering where that formula comes from, imagine this is point P and this is point Q. The distance from one to the other is the length of the straight line segment connecting them. So if our points are like this, what we can imagine doing is kind of dropping straight down from the higher point and then connecting over horizontally and drop an altitude down to form the sides of a right triangle. Then according to the Pythagorean theorem, the square of this length, in other words, the square of the distance from point P to point Q is the sum of the squares of the leg lengths. But this horizontal length is the distance between their x-coordinates. The vertical length is the distance between their y-coordinates. So that's why we do x-coordinate minus x-coordinate squared plus y-coordinate minus y-coordinate squared. That's like the square of this leg plus the square of this leg equals the distance squared. So that's, of course, why we have the square root. So the Pythagorean theorem gives us the distance formula. And then the distance formula is what gives us the equation of a circle in the plane. So imagine I have some point h comma k, which I would like to think of as the center of a circle of radius r. So here's my circle. Now what makes a circle a circle? So what is the definition of a circle? Well, the definition of a circle on the plane is it's all of the points which are a fixed distance r from the center point. So this distance is r, and this distance is r, et cetera. So if I think of this point out here as x comma y, then those coordinates must satisfy that r equals the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, because again, the distance from x comma y to h comma k must be r, so that's just applying the distance formula to those points. And then typically we write this actually by squaring both sides. So we would say the equation of the circle is all the points x, y satisfying x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay, now let's go up to R3 and see similar notions there. So if I have two points in R3, p and q, I need to give three coordinates for them. So here the x coordinate of point p is p1, the y coordinate is p2, and the z coordinate is p3. Then the distance formula measuring the distance from point P to point Q in R3 is analogous to the formula in R2. Namely, it's going to be the square root of P1 minus Q1 squared plus P2 minus Q2 squared plus P3 minus Q3 squared. In the plane, we said all points which are the same distance from a fixed point define a circle. If we're working in XYZ space in R3, then the notion that we want to look at now is all points in three-dimensional space, which are fixed distance from a center point. It's not going to be a circle. It's going to be what we call a sphere. So to draw a sphere, I usually first draw a circle. Then I do kind of like the equator. And then I do dot, dot, dot to kind of indicate what you can't actually see because it's sort of behind on the back side of the sphere. So this is closer to us and this is farther from us. This isn't the best sphere I've ever drawn, but that's okay. I want to make a remark here about vocabulary, and that is when we say circle, we're really talking about 
just these points, which are exactly distance R from the center. So we're not talking about what you might call the interior. So a circle is really just the edge here. Similarly, when we say sphere, we are just talking about essentially what I've sketched here in orange. So it's all of the points which are fixed distance from the center point ABC. And when we're talking about spheres, we usually denote that fixed distance, that radius length, if you will, by rho, the Greek letter rho. So the sphere is these points which are exactly distance rho from the center. When we say sphere, we do not include the interior. So if I'm thinking about a sphere, kind of like a beach ball, the sphere is just the plastic part. It's not the air inside. Okay, so what would be the equation of a sphere? Well, just going off of the equation of the circle up at the top and our, our knowledge that it's gonna come out of the distance formula, the equation is going to be x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus z minus c squared equals rho squared. So this is our equation of a sphere. So we will see spheres a lot in this course. Sometimes we'll start with this description, this algebraic description, and we'll recognize it as a sphere, or we'll go the other direction. We'll know that we're working with a sphere and we have to write down its equation. Let's do a little bit of graphing, kind of sticking with this idea of, of circles, spheres. I'm gonna introduce in just one more shape that you're gonna recognize. So we already saw that the equation y equals zero gave us a different set of points in R2 versus R3. Similarly, let's now consider what set of points in R2 versus R3 satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals one. Well, in R2, x squared plus y squared equals one is the familiar unit circle. What happens though in R3? Well, the key observation to make when we look at this equation in R3 is that we don't really know anything about z. In fact, we have no constraint on z. This equation doesn't prevent z from being 0 or 100 or negative 100. The only condition here that we have to satisfy with the points in R3 that make this equation true is that the x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared has to be 1. So in particular, if I'm just looking at the xy plane as a subset of R3, so just take the plane z equals zero, the coordinate plane z equals zero, then this circle of radius one living in the xy plane makes this equation true. But this equation does not require that z equals zero. So it could be the case that z is say two. Perhaps this circle I just drew is happening at the elevation z equals two or perhaps z equals four, or any value in between. Likewise, z could be negative. And what we're actually sketching here is what we call a circular cylinder. Now in this picture, I've only drawn a piece of the cylinder, but of course we could keep taking higher and higher z values or more and more negative z values. So the cylinder is actually infinitely tall. So again, we wanna be precise with our vocabulary here, just like we specified what points exactly we're talking about when we say the word circle or sphere. When we say circular cylinder, we are talking specifically about the points which are on what look kind of like the edge here, not the interior. So it's like if you made the cylinder by rolling up a piece of paper, the points which are actually the cylinder corresponds to the paper itself, not the inside. It's not a solid object, if you will. Okay, so that concludes this look at R2 and R3. Of course, we're going to keep working in these spaces for the rest of the semester. Thank you for your attention.